everyone, this is uh, Casey and Drew, and we're coming to you from our van. Uh, this is a little different because of Corona, and because we're not allowed to do VA homes right now, nor do we want to. We don't want to get anybody sick. So we're just gonna do what we know what to do, um, and I'm really proud to introduce one of my best friends. This is uh, Captain Alex Andreg. Alex, just shoot the shit and tell them a little bit about yourself. All right, uh, what's up, Drew? Hey, Casey. Hey, Alex. Um, it's good to hear you guys' voice again. It's been a long time. Um, so I am uh, I'm a current F-16 pilot with the Alabama Air National Guard here in uh, lovely Montgomery, Alabama. Uh, currently, uh, kind of moonlighting as an instructor at Officer Training School. I just kind of want to get into the the beginning of it all. So, how do we know each other? I guess first off. <laughs> Man, so it uh, it goes back to August of 2015. That was the day you and I started uh, pilot training at Laughlin Air Force Base, man. So um, it goes it goes back to there. So our first week, uh, I don't think we really knew each other much, but then we we kind of went out on you know Austin had some people over. You know we're we're still feeling out everybody uh, in the in the class, and um, it was like you me. Tom, Kenan, Austin, Eric, that's the six of us. Yeah, well, our, so our bros group definitely, like, formed quickly. Yeah, yep, so... Um, Was it love at first sight? Yeah, it, it didn't It didn't take very long. No. Like, we all, we all no. like, had this, the same kind of identity, and we just all gravitated towards each other. So we're the um, bros. I definitely think that's what it was. For those that don't know, explain a little bit about what UPT is, and explain, I guess, for you, I think it's kind of cool because I want to get into more of just like life or what it's like for you. But you come out of college. First off, where did you go to school? And explain a little bit about yourself. You're a little different. How did you get into flying as well? My flying history goes back to when I was even in uh, in high school. When I was 16, I was taking flying lessons. July 26, 2008 was the date of my first flying lesson. Um, September 20th, 2008 was my first solo so it's been a while since since i've been flying so i always known i wanted to fly ever since i was real little like your your class i was even telling somebody this today at ots like your classic like you watch the movie top gun you, you go to air shows and see jets flying around airplanes flying around like hooked um i mean you can see behind me i got airplanes i got more airplanes lining I mean, air, my apartment here is it's it's a, a bachelor pad of, of airplanes is really what it is so, um i love flying and everything about it i went to western michigan university i was in the aviation program when i went to upt i showed up having uh i had just over 1500 hours and a multi-engine atp rating so wow. the multi airline transport pilot certificate so your standard kind of doctorate if you will of pilot ratings that's, that's kind of the the pinnacle and you showed up to pilot training with that i did yeah yep so what was that like yeah. what was that experience how could you do you you know so because some instructors and i can say this having been through the program and out but like alex was better than some of the instructors he flew with with more time more experience and we heard that and that's what was that experience like? Man, those are your words, not mine. Um, but, I mean, truth truth be told, like, yeah, there were brand new FAPES at, at Laughlin who I had, you know, uh, a lot more a lot more flight time than them. But um, that I – and I, I had talked to people about that, going into pilot training, having a lot of flight experience. Um, is it going to help me? Is it going to, like, is it going to be a negative? It depends on your mindset going into pilot training. Do you have – the mentality where you are going to allow these instructors to mold you into the Air Force product that they want you to be, that Uncle Sam wants you to be, or are you going to be the pilot who's like, you know what, man, like, I can do this. I don't need you to tell me how to do it. Like, I've got my way. Like, just shut up and let me fly, right? So um, I went in there with the former attitude. Um, so I was like, you know what, man, like Uncle Sam wants to make me the pilot. Like that's why I'm in pilot training is to, to learn the Air Force way. So I, I very much um, uh, let myself get molded into that product. So to answer your question, though, it was my, my pilot training previous experience was um, immensely helpful. All right. So um, just having a basic air sense. Um, you know, seat of the pants kind of kind of flying thing, talking on the radios, taxiing, you know, all this kind of stuff, just a general air sense. Um, 
it it put me, for lack of a better word, light years ahead of individuals like you who didn't <laughs> hey. have any, any pilot training. And I, and I don't say that in a negative way. You you remember Hunter Hayes, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, none. Yeah, he had zero flying guy. experience. He has a PE degree, right? And he's flying A-10s now, and he was the DG of our class. So that that just that goes to say that it doesn't matter how much flight experience you have like you can be you can have zero flight time and absolutely just crush the program yeah so well, then uh yeah we went through pilot training and uh graduated uh september 2016 and throughout that year we got ourselves into a whole bunch of shenanigans as a as a group of six so um I, I tell everybody, it doesn't matter what UPT base you go to, like you're gonna love it. You're gonna meet people that uh, you are going to be friends with for the rest of your lives. Active duty, you have people that come from the Air Force Academy, um, an active duty board for officer training school or for uh, ROTC, ROTC, Reserve Officer Training uh, Corps. So those individuals go into pilot training, they commission, go to pilot training, and then they compete for, uh, in the T6, they compete for a, uh, an advanced track aircraft. So either the, the T-1, the T-38, or the UH-1 to go the helicopter route. So the T-38 is the fighter-bomber track, traditionally. Then you've got the T-1, which is your tankers, cargo, uh, etc. And then you've got the UH-1, which is the helicopter track. So um, you go through pilot training, and you compete for all these things, right? Just with your raw scores off of your, um, your, your daily flying so you compete for those slots. You, you compete at the end of, of pilot training to get your actual aircraft assignment, whereas the Air National Guard and the Air Force Reserves, like I do my competing via interview prior to even going to officer training school to commission as an officer. I think everyone assumes Top Gun that there's just girls left and right for guys to pick from. And the reality is, where are most Air Force bases, and what is the reality of a fighter pilot life like? I can expand on that. So, uh, most Air Force bases are in the middle of nowhere. Um, so that means, like, nightlife to go out and do things, and, you know, go out and party on the town. Like, doesn't happen. What is your normal 9 to 5? Like, what is your day going through check right before, and check, you know, this stuff after? Yeah, all right, so, um... I've got a check ride, or I've got a I've got a check ride. Let's say on Friday, right? So um, today today's today's a Wednesday. So tomorrow, Thursday, would be spent pretty much mission planning. Pretty much the most of the day, like you'll have a target set. Um, you'll need to find weapons to attack that target set. All these different tactics and all this math that that's behind it. So you can spend a whole day mission planning. I've got a check ride on Friday, right? So I so get to work at maybe like you know 6:30, brief at 7:30. Uh, brief will last for about an hour and 10 minutes or so, then we'll step to the jets. We'll step to the jets at about 9 a.m. and then take off at 9:50, and then from there it's it's fights on. So once you get in the airspace, about 15 minutes after you take off, 20 minutes you're in the airspace and then ready to fight. Um, we'll fight for about an hour. When I say fight, that means execute the mission that, that we've gone out to do. So we will do, you know, the kind of extended trail type stuff, you know, think like Top Gun dogfighting. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll do that kind of stuff, absolutely. Um, but on a, on a check ride, not so much. We'll do a more missionized where you have to take off, go in the airspace. There's usually four jets, uh, good guys, and then usually uh, maybe four or more bad guys where we will, we have our target set, but we have this air defense, enemy air defense guarding that target. We have to shoot them down. So we shoot them down and then drop our bombs and then pretty much they will regenerate themselves and they'll come back alive and then we have to shoot them down back on the way out. So fight your way in, drop your bombs, fight your way back out. So we'll do that usually about twice and then by then we're probably about out of gas and then we'll come back, land, um, and then we'll validate our shots. So our air to air, you know, shooting other airplanes down, we'll validate that our missiles actually would have timed out and killed them the way that we thought they would in the air. Um, and then we'll actually, after that, that takes about, that takes about maybe an hour to get that data and then about an hour to go through the actual shot validation. Um, and then, uh, after that starts the debrief and that can last sometimes up to, um, like three to four hours and by that time you know we're talking probably about 5 p.m at night that you're leaving so um it can it can make for a pretty long day like your like your hair is on fire that that's kind of how we, we refer to your hair being on fire when you're flying is a, a helmet fire 
um, where you're just you're you're behind the jet and you just you can't you can't get caught back up. Um, that happens sometimes, um, but man, I tell you what, when you are proficient and you've got you know all your jet systems are working, your radar works, your my targeting my helmet targeting system works. I've got a heat seeking missile that works, so I can do off bore sight queuing. Like if all that stuff works and I'm and I, I'm I'm killing it, like man, it is so much fun. In our class, we didn't have a whole lot of minorities or anything like that. And just with the environment, I think for us not being minority and we'll never know what it's like, we just learn we just have to shut up and be quiet right now and just listen and really hear from other people that do, you know, fall into that group. I feel like the, the, the nation in its entirety is, is a little bit behind uh, on that. And it's, it's been very evident in all the... Uh, the protests and rioting and all that stuff in the wake of the death of George Floyd. Um, so obviously a very hot topic, um, very, very sensitive topic to, to speak on. I just want to really know, like, how do you feel? Like, what is your personal take off the uniform? Yeah, do you feel like it's time or do you feel like it's not relevant to what you do or do you feel like it is and we need to... I feel like it's, it's relevant to everybody. Um, when, you know... You, you want the answer, you know, take off my flight suit and, and, and give you a, a straight answer. Um, I, I think it's time. I think it's, 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 I, I hate that someone uh, passed away for, like, ha someone died, right, up in Minneapolis, and then that has kind of been the catalyst for what has set this in motion. It's very unfortunate that it's taken that for this to happen, um, but I think it is time. Um, and it, the, these protests, you know, it's it's bringing to light all these issues that that are still out there. Um, and I'll, I'll give you an example that you know I was talking to our our current OSS commander at the at our fighter squadron, telling me you know man, um, I I had no idea that this was you know affecting this many people. You know, um, I've I've worked with African American individuals as a fighter pilot in the Air Force um, to include the newly selected chief of staff, uh, yeah, right. General C Q Brown and. Um, and uh, Chief Wright, like he's he's talked to these guys, and you know, watching their videos that they posted just recently, it's like, man, he didn't think that it would happen to like these such like these high caliber individuals. I mean, like this guy was a you know, he's a four star general. Like he's not just some Joe Schmo, right? And we're talking the chief of staff, Chief Wright. Like these these people are not just like your normal Joe Schmo individuals, right? These are very high performing uh, uh, individuals. Um, in the eyes of you know our our Congress and our our leadership for the the United States of America, right? So, um, but talking to to those those individuals and hearing their videos, you know, yeah, you know this this happened to me. They would they would never talk about it in the operational right. squadron. They would never talk about it. But these are things that they're dealing with, you know. And it, it was it was eye opening for him that as educated as he thought he was, and as educated as we all think that we are, you know, this is shedding light on this for all of us that you know what maybe maybe there's a lot i still don't know um you know like this this guy like chief chief Wright, and then uh general brown saying that they've yeah i've, I've experienced this i've dealt with this before and just not even thinking like man but like you're you're a general like people i mean generals are very high, highly regarded individuals like when they're on base like you know a general's on base but yet they still can go to walmart you know they gotta buy groceries like the rest of us Right, go to Walmart, Publix, or wherever. Uh, shout out to Meyer back at uh, back in the Great Lakes region. Um, like they can be, you know, discriminated against like, like anybody else. To have my chief of staff go to Walmart out of uniform and potentially be discriminated against, you know, for me that's just like, and, and they won't see would lay out anybody that did that to his chief of staff. Love you. Thank you so much for doing this. All right. Yeah, you bet, man. Casey, good to see you, girlfriend.